Veselin, first of all, congratulations on your victory in Armageddon and uh, the first classical game. Do you know that you didn't do any new move in that game? No. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, no. They say that there was a game between Yu Yang Gi and uh, Ding Loren and it followed the uh, same uh, consequences of moves. <laughs> no. Did you, were you aware of that game or no, did, which no, ones? I I think it, I was a bit worried because okay in general this line is very um, I think it's kind of harmless but uh, there was an idea at the very beginning uh, that Kasparov introduced uh, when first pl White plays H4 and then he has some options which is uh, but I don't I couldn't remember you know and then um, uh, in the game I I mean I went for this which I don't really know it's, uh, it's such a good idea because uh, there was some other move. I, uh, we, I, uh, I could reach an in ending only bishops with pawns and my pawns would be weak, but I think uh, that would still be an easy draw. I could just, the only important thing was to place a, a pawn on f5 and not to allow uh, white's uh, pawn to g4 and then the ending I think it's just a draw. Yeah, yeah. So uh, probably it was just logical moves, let's say, which yeah, followed. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, honestly, I didn't know. Yeah. Okay, and then there was this Armageddon game, and it seems like Black were doing fine from the beginning. Or what was your feeling? Uh, well, uh, well, it's a sharp line. When uh, somehow I decided that uh, playing normally, I think I would probably lose on time. So my plan was to go uh, for... Uh, sharp uh, complicated position and then uh, especially well concretely this line I didn't know but uh, I more or less knew how to place my pieces because I've also played with white so I had an experience and uh, from one point on uh, it became very clear that uh, it looked that uh, my king was open but uh, I knew that it uh, my my position was very solid and it's very difficult to break and uh, with good counter chances and of course uh, I played so quickly that uh, uh, his uh, 10 seconds became five and I still had more time so yeah, exactly he spent lots of time thinking maybe how to break through in this position yeah. well yeah but uh, again I uh, last uh, last year I played with black in a slow game against uh, my ex um, second Ivan Ceparinov, mm -hmm. and we had a similar structure. Okay, uh, and somehow f I, I knew that it's very solid and not so easy to break. Yeah, and uh, at the end, actually, you had like I don't know how many four pawns, extra pawns, and you, but you decided to go for repetition. Is it some kind of code of ethics? Mm, maybe, yeah, because uh, I think uh, last time I also played against uh, Maxim, this um, Fide Grand Prix. And then uh, in both cases I was losing white and then in the second game I, uh, he was almost winning and then he was letting me a draw because he only needed uh, you know, a draw to pass to the next round. Yeah. But uh, well, but I mean, okay, uh, in a slow game ratings matter, but uh, okay, blitz, uh, okay, I don't really care about my blitz rating. Yeah, Timur now is going to play in the candidates tournament very soon. Uh, first of all, do you think it was a good decision to play the tournament just before? And secondly, as, as a participant of so many World Championship cycles, mm -hmm. what can you actually advise him to do in this situation? Um, well, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I'm very good in advising because my last, candid last two candidates were a complete disaster. But it's really the, the problem is that if it goes wrong, then it, uh, then it's. Uh, I mean, for example, in my cases, if you go with the idea to win, and then if start if you one starts badly, then at some point uh, you realize um, you no winning chances. So you and then still like ten days, nothing to do. Uh, yeah, like that's you lose motivation, but you still exactly, have to play. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it just very difficult to give an advice i mean what can you say in general about the candidates tournament it's a special event let's say for any chess yeah, it's player like a bit uh, one winner and uh, many losers uh, concretely in this in this one my take is that i think uh, dink liren he has chances because uh, uh, not only he's playing well but because also he's um, uh, he got this last spot. He was lucky to to, and sometimes uh, uh, it's a sign. Then 
I believe also Fabiano has some chances and of course Firuja, but of course he's unpredictable. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. these were the, my three top picks. Yeah, and you also mentioned that uh, it's a pity that Wesley Saw is not playing in the candidates. Yes. Well, yeah. I <clears throat> I mean, I honestly believe he has a lot more chances to in a potential match against Magnus than anyone else now. Uh, but he cannot even go, get close to. Well, he would still never be a favorite, but I think he's very talented. He would, uh, he, he would have. Uh, I would, I would love to see uh, a match between him and Magnus. But uh, okay, it's just empty, empty talk because he's not even close. Yeah, I mean, he he was actually close. If, I mean, in the last Grand Prix, if he would, if Nakamura wouldn't play so well <laughs> as well, you remember when he won but, this Grand Prix in Berlin. But uh, close is not enough, and then of course, even if you qualify to candidates, it's just uh, not. I mean, you have to win it. So, and it's very very difficult. The road is very difficult to the match for sure. Thank you very much, Vaseline. All the best in the next rounds. Thank, Thank you. you.